Hello, and welcome to Productivity Compass by Zoho Projects. Today, we have a very special guest amongst us. Mr. Sri Srinivasa is the Program Management Lead for Operational Process and Systems at Tesla. This talk is an initiative by our team at Zoho Projects. We have been very lucky to have some of the industry stalwarts share their experiences with the project management community. Zoho is a company that builds SaaS software products for businesses. We are over 20 years old now and have more than 40 products to run sales, marketing, HR, finance, and more. Zoho Projects is our offering for project managers. It is used by customers around the world and in every industry to plan projects, big and small, track their progress, and collaborate with teams. We also have focused capabilities for agile teams. To introduce our speaker, Mr. Srinivasa is a recent graduate from Harvard Business Analytics program. He holds PMP certification from Project Management Institute. He is certified in governance of enterprise IT from Information Systems Audit Control Association and is also certified Information Systems Auditor for Audit, Information Security, and Compliance. Mr. Srinivasa comes with over 20 years of experience leading and managing medium to large scale IT applications engineering enterprise software applications, audit, information security and compliance, digital product solutions across technology platforms. His key focus areas include global operational readiness and standardizing best practices across teams. He has handled multiple project portfolios to help meet business objectives and advance top level goals and organizational strategy. He's also a public speaker, coach and mentor. He guides startup companies and non-profit companies on process, project, and program framework in the capacity as a board member and core management group. Talking about his hobbies and interests, he has produced shows at Stanford University College Radio for the past 11 years. His channel, It's Diff, has a spree of talks on leadership. He's also a vocal artist and humorist. He has been supporting and providing PM work for local non-profit organizations. Before we start, I have a few points to make. The session will last for about 40 minutes, which will be followed by question and answers. You can post your questions in the live chat section. The speaker will answer them after his talk. In case of audio or video issues, please use the link zoho.to slash projects live to reconnect to the live stream. For more updates and future webinars, please follow us at Zoho Projects. Mr. Srinivasa, the forum is now on yours. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gerongo and uh, the Zoho team. And uh, it's a great pleasure and honor to be here. And uh, especially in this uh, unprecedented tough times with the epidemic. And uh, there are lots of opportunities available for all of us to connect virtually. And uh, we learn something new or share our experience from what we have learned. Life is a journey and there's always ups and downs. So and we, we, we learn every day and we learn we care and we share. So thanks for giving me an opportunity and it's a, it's a pleasure to be with you all. And thanks for all, uh, all the audience uh, who have given their valuable time uh, to our uh, program today. So thank you. So uh, just wanted to read a little uh, disclaimer here. Uh, the, in the content that you're going to see is from my experience that I've learned from great leaders and great uh, projects. And uh, any references uh, that we mention, it's, uh, it's quoted elsewhere uh, here on the slide deck. And also from uh, experience from my present and uh, uh, you know, other uh, employments where all over the globe where I was uh, very fortunate to help support uh, the, the companies. But they don't, but again, these are my views from my experience and uh, it doesn't bind uh, my current or past employers. I just wanted to call that out. And of course, this is mainly meant for educational awareness, training, and uh, uh, to encourage discussion among our learning community of project managers and cannot be used for any commercial or business benefits. I just wanted to read that out as you see here. Uh, what we are going to do today in the next 40 minutes or so is just a general overview of uh, project management. The main thing here is to just set the right stage and get some terminologies clarified and see a brief project life cycle, a sample framework, which is pretty much on the basis of uh, PMI, well-known World uh, uh, Institute, uh, Project Management Institute, PMI.org, 
I really credit them for all my learnings. And also the other organization is ISACA, I-S-A-C-A dot O-R-G. And um, you, there are lots of uh, process and uh, technology and how it's usage and things like that. So I would uh, quote uh, necessarily where appropriate. And what do you expect from a project manager? And what is that uh, person uh, whose role here? They've got a definitive role to play in bringing a lot of people together. So what is expected? Then what are the critical success factors that will really help a project to succeed? We learn every day. We look for failures. We fix them. And uh, some which we could not fix, we just try to see how else can we collaborate to fix. So let's just talk through that. And what are the tool sets that are available to us? How can we leverage some of the tools, right? The next one is tips for leading projects effectively. This is more like, a, I would say, a summary, which gives an example of in the, in the project life cycle on how we can do certain things. Again, project management is an ocean. There are a lot of things. There are a lot of knowledge areas. There are a lot of processes and stuff. To put everything into the 35 minutes uh, here is, is difficult, but I'll try to do justice with some of my learnings and see what I was looking for, what I learned, etc. So it's again to learn, care, and share. So let's go to uh, general uh, the uh, the next slide, please. Overview of project management. It's an application of knowledge, skills, tools, and techniques to to project activities to meet the project requirements. So the key things, as you see, it's it's a there's a definition from the PMI.org, and if you look at this, the requirements is what uh, one has to really uh, pay attention to. In, in short example, you can say, what problem are we solving? Who is our stakeholder? Who are all the people have to come together to uh, accomplish an objective, to meet the requirements, right? And uh, how do we really get to the process that from start to finish, right? So if you see, look at the next bullet there. Project management, it includes the process groups as defined by PMI is initiating, planning, executing, monitoring, and controlling and closing. There are a lot of key things involved. Sometimes you get an opportunity to start from the beginning of a project. Sometimes I've seen the dynamism and say, there is a problem. The project is already underway. It's not going anywhere. You just have to go and find out what's happening, what has not happened, how you are going to just go and solve the problem. So there are lo always lots of things, a lot of uh, variations that could happen here. So the first thing I would say from a project management perspective is to understand the context, understand their own purpose, collaborate, communicate, be organized. So a lot of things I would see, a couple of keywords as we move through the presentation. And of course, one thing we need to understand the project is it's unique and it's temporary. That's interesting. Why you say project is temporary? Because you know, this there's not a project that you always say that, oh, it runs for uh, months and years and a uh, decade. It's not like that. A project has got a definitive goals. You have some requirements and then you face the projects. PHASC, right? And also you just say, say, have a start date and end date and you start the next phase, start date and end date. And then you learn from the previous phase. You just correct yourself. It's something you, you would see as a retrospective as we do in, in agile uh, methodology, right? After every sprint, you say, what did we do well? What we didn't do well? How can we change? Is there a problem with the skill? Is there a problem with our, you know, the various constraints of a project, right? So in first place, we need to understand we have to meet the requirements. To meet the requirements, there, are, there is a process. Everything is around process. So what PMI recommends generally is uh, the, the, the uh, process uh, groups as you see here. Let's go to the next slide, please. So as part of the terminology briefing, um, you can see here on the left, the product portfolio program and project management. I just wanted to just uh, talk through a few points here. Let's start reading from the le uh, to left top. Generally, you see always people think about the, the product is like you know, there is always a requirement. There's a market need. There is a, there is a something we need to increase our market share. There is a there is a roadmap of this product that is being planned. 
which which will result in a feature and functionality and things like that of course who is the main driver the customer the competition the regulatory uh, right and uh, security what not so it might result in of course it's a hardware product or a software product or of course these days everybody is on mobile uh, as an example for a software application it could be an enterprise wide system or it can it would be an individual it could be like a b2c application uh, it could be a device uh, that could uh, help uh, streaming or uh, uh, the the application or media what not so there's this a product a very specific you know which is uh, uh, which has got a definitive goal to feature after feature there is a it, some people you, you would have heard minimal viable product that needs to be launched at a particular time and then you enhance the product you learn from the industry look at the customer they give some feedback look at the competitors and then you try to get to know how can we uh, innovate how can i digitally transform my company to uh, get ahead of the competition how can i be efficient all kinds of things uh, you will just uh, focus on the product side of the equation then if you look at the see the the portfolio is it's uh, everything is a project you can say but again uh, a product that is to be launched is managed through a project manager i'm trying to bring the relationship here that it will be good to understand so then what happens is right you see the the competitiveness the revenue where in answer uh, then the legal regulatory stuff you are doing some projects for cost reduction for efficiency gain meaning what i can do in 30 minutes i wanted to do it in uh, in 15 minutes so if uh, for, say say for example if you are buying some products now everybody is going online for purchasing everything especially in in this current situation of this epidemic in covid 19 so if you look at uh, people are trying to say okay you can order on the web and things like that you don't have 20 clicks to get to uh, uh, purchase and complete the order can i do this in five clicks show a catalog give them a, a package where they can just quickly go and uh, check it could be a bundled product what not and then you just have to pay and uh, you just uh, so you put your address and stuff like that and hit uh, done or you are going to uh, go and pick it up on, on the on the store on the curbside pickup what not look at the number of clicks there versus uh, you just go through a like about 300 product lines and you try to sort through and things like that so a person has to always look at efficiency minimize the number of clicks it's all driven by the customer and the innovation and how to be efficient etc so so this becomes portfolio so if you look at to your right here uh, given some examples on a finance portfolio and a sales portfolio means these are all right uh, portfolios are vertical where you can see there are programs which consist of projects and each project has got some deliverables and the end of it you know you start and you finish so that you should understand the relationship because uh, finance sales marketing engineering supply chain um, order operations for that matter you know you have uh, marketing you have lot, I mean communications there's a lot of individual verticals will have their portfolio and they all have their budget in terms of uh, getting some projects to be executed there is some budget allocation in organization so we need to understand that but again the question here is uh, it depends on the level of the project manager also like sometimes you know you are given and say go and execute it sometimes you are in a situation where you will be able to contribute to the portfolio in some cases you are in a, a c suite executive who is just looking at what projects are what projects or programs or a portfolio that we need to allocate the the funds so that's kind of so what we are going to do in the next uh, couple of minutes is there are two angles one is the strategic angle another one is the operational angle so let's focus on the the operational angle of this projects how to be how to drive and lead projects effectively all right so of course in every uh, uh, portfolio or the program you see you can see it's a satisfy the business requirements is our main uh, uh, you know goal our motto right so as you see programs and projects are it's basically they're intertwined there are a lot of related projects formed together to form a program which is the key thing for the to meet the company's goals and objectives ultimately we need alignment to the company's goals and objectives so first thing is as an executive's responsibility is to get the mission statement get the goals and objectives trickled down to the manager and below 
right? And as a project manager, our goal is to understand not only just what problems are we solving and how is it aligned and meeting the goals and objectives of the company. This is always like there's a company's milestone which we are targeting for and delivering value. So that's the main thing. All right. Yeah. So let's go to the next slide, please. The project life cycle, which is, uh, yeah. So are we are we good there? Uh, project life cycle is sample framework. Yes. So in this case, you know, let's just look at the central uh, uh, the diagram there, which is you initiate, you plan, you develop and build, execute, monitor and support. I mean, this is just like a, a broader, uh, um, you know, can say phases. That's kind of fitting the PMI framework, but it's just my way of doing uh, uh, this to keep it simple. So you, you, there is always you initiate something, then you plan, then you start designing, and then uh, you just start building and execute, monitor, and support. So let's look at the. I'll peel the onion for you. On the right side, you see plan and prioritize. First of all, that is very important because there are like hundreds of requirements. So you need to also plan what is the minimal viable product that will get the biggest bang for the buck. So the challenge here for most of us is if you say the project is going to take eight months and 12 months and six months. Yeah, that's what it takes. But if you want to be competitive, if you have some regulatory uh, conditions that you have to meet, if you think that you, you, you have the information security, data privacy or anything for that matter that needs to be met now, there's no time for waiting six months, eight months like that. And in this competitive world, we are all racing to the occasion, right? So what we have to do is prioritize and then understand, make sure that we have got, uh, there is a process alignment, there is a systems alignment. We have the capacity to deliver, right? And we have to understand the dependencies between the various uh, tasks that we are, we are uh, that forms of, that contributes to the deliverable. It aligns with the product roadmap. So what we do is we will just understand the various tasks understand the dependencies, do some kind of an estimation, and then uh, create a minimal viable product kind of a situation where you say, what can I deliver in three weeks? What can I deliver in six weeks? So that way you work towards uh, shaping up the you know requirements design more like an agile way or a hybrid way of doing things, and then get to the deliverable of this product in, 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 in a quick, uh, with a quick turnaround. That way people see value, of course, with great quality. That is very important at, uh, at uh, every uh, phase of the project. Quality is the mantra. And then, of course, you will perform risk assessment. So if you, if you kind of make sure you assess your capacity, you assess the requirements, you did some estimation, you did some process system alignment, and you see how it is aligned with the roadmap, because you can't just go and get a requirement which is not in your roadmap, right? So I'm just giving it at a high level. Every one of them can really warrant a session on its own. Then let's move on to the right here. As you see, the build, test, validate. And these are all, okay, once when you know, okay, fine. We all agreed, everybody, we got the right skill resources. Uh, we put a high level project timeline and uh, with milestones established and everything. Okay, let's start build. Of course, one of the things is, what are the use cases? What are the test scenarios? We are going to do it in an iterative process. That means, you know, you build a test to validate, build a test to validate. Like, you know, sounds very familiar. It's like agile, right? And then, of course, you always need to have a st status check at a every point of time. I always say you ought to keep an elevator pitch ready. Hey, how is the project going? Um, yeah, you know, no, you just say the project is we have accomplished three milestones. We are targeting the next milestone. We are having an issue. We reached out to somebody. Maybe you could help us. That's the kind of th that thing. If you, if you, assuming you are meeting an executive and he's asking this question, and say always the executives always ask you, what can I do for you? What do you need from me? I am the sponsor of this uh, program or project, and uh, I'm. Uh, I just wanted to know where you are. Then the next that means what does it mean? They are questioning you. They are asking, how can I help you? So you need to always, as a project manager, you need to have those data points at all times with you. It's not that uh, 20 things that you know. It is the thing that you know to get some help to get the project moving 
and uh, uh, get some resources reassigned, get some additional support to get the project executed because your, your head is in the line, right? So it's a, such a very enviable uh, uh, situation, I would say, all right? So when you do the development and stuff, one of the things which is often forgotten, which I would like to, again, high level, is you need to talk about how are we going to do the releases? Are you going to have a weekly release? Are you going to have a monthly release or a bi-weekly release? Plan this, work with the release engineers if it is an IT system project and, uh, and everybody should be aligned there, okay? I'll, I'll talk more in a couple of slides there. Support planning is, of course, this is one thing which is often forgotten. You know, who is going to support post release of this project? Is there a customer support team? If you are handling customers, then customers will be calling in. Who's going to handle them? What is the uh, like uh, level one support, level two support? Uh, everything needs to be planned right this stage. And you'll see some stars on top here. They are all uh, with, with, you can see like a, um, um, the legend. It's the audit and compliance and information security. We need to engage those teams as well to see if there is any financial data or report uh, that is going to be an outcome of this project where a company's decision is going to be made. Being a public company, we are obligated to make sure we are compliant from a SOX perspective as well. And at the same time, information security is uh, very important as to how secure is your website, how resilient is your website, right? How much of data is being protected? What data are you collecting? That itself is a separate topic to discuss, but at least what I would like to tell them, it's not an afterthought. Most of the time, the data security, information security, compliance is an afterthought. So I would suggest uh, that as a part of the process, we should have it there. That's why there is a star there to just to highlight that. Okay, let's go keep moving on from the execute to the, the readiness review. Uh, no, keep, keep in the same slide, please. Uh, on the readiness review, uh, product deployment, go live support, more monitor. means monitoring is very important to see uh, how do you know that the, the, this project uh, has been successfully uh, delivered? What is the, uh, you know, who's accepting that project? So it's very important to know the user acceptance Post project is also matters. Just go survey it, talk to the field, understand what's happened, what is not happening. Because there are a lot of times you design something, you execute something, and you call the project is done. No. What will be more helpful is go to the field, talk to the customer, internal or external customer, understand are they using the project the the develop i mean the developed software application or the implemented process for that matter are they using the manner it was because there's always gaps in the communication and stuff so you got to make sure that you 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 do a good job of uh, doing some field analysis right and some people have they, they do pilot also they'll say, say do it in a phased implementation for a subset of the teams to see and learn before they really go full blown and especially when you're global when you're implementing something you got to be very careful there so the last one on this uh, slide do you see the retrospective then what is the measure success against the roi return on investment is you said that you know i'm going to uh, increase my productivity by 30 percent I'm going to reduce cost by 25%, okay? Uh, so how do you measure? You come up with those uh, stats and you tell your sponsor about, this is how my ROI of this project and that's the need for doing this project. You do all this uh, pitching and everything during the, you know, the first strat strategic uh, angle before to get the project uh, approved. But then when after the project, we have to go and uh, learn, did really, are we doing this? If not, what do we need to do? Why? Is it a failure? So you know what? Always look for that angle to learn from the previous project. All right? And of course, you are in a maintenance mode. Of course, you'll have to do a lot of uh, patches. You'll have to maintain and make sure. There'll be some uh, things missing here and there. People will get new ideas when they start using it. You need to make sure there is adoption. The user adoption is the best thing that you can expect. So for all the efforts as a team that a project manager, the product manager, business analyst, the developer, engineering, QA, test, business stakeholder, everybody put together in front of the customer to look good for, for the company perspective, the adoption will really get the company from point A to point B 
in terms of you know being a competitor in in this competitive world let's go to the next slide please so expectations from a project manager as you have seen in uh, various places you need the right attitude you need to be a re relationship builder you need to be self organized that's very important and you need to have a good documentation skills that doesn't mean you need to replace a technical writer you can always engage a technical writer to uh, get the technical documentation but just the basic things that is required from a project manager is do you have all the tasks aligned you are you to understand the dependencies you have the business requirements documented you have a status reporting to talk about what did i do what is coming up next uh, when where, what are the risk what are the blockers are uh, you organized uh, do you have the project sign off at various stages you need to do all that and i always tell my project team you need to understand the business context understand the business context see it's a, there's always some attitude where you give me a project when is it to be delivered then i'll take care of it thank you that's good that's a good attitude at the same time if you understand why we're doing this and it will really help and who needs to do what the reason is it will help to go and unblock somebody because at the end of the day project manager are in a very enviable situation also you are a great facilitator a great communicator who establishes accountability against various people so if something is not happening you need to just escalate escalation is good in this case it's not just telling bad about something you are the person who brings in the visibility red green yellow don't feel bad about say calling it as red when you say call it as red what did you what are you recommending right let's go to the next slide please so the just a quickly you all know this you're all experienced people so you see there's always a, we work on this triple constraints you see a scope schedule cost right always if there is the, the scope is not controlled if it is not properly planned then you are you are not able to predict the timeline in which uh, this project needs to be delivered right sometimes you are not given the opportunity and then say um, here are this 100 requirements can you tell me when this project can be uh, completed more often you see in this competitiveness a date is fixed already you agree i see you guys nodding your head and then you work backwards to see if i need to deliver to match with my company milestone then when am i to do the pilot when am i to deploy when am i to test when am i to do what the in terms of the various phases uh, uh, of this project right so you got to be careful with uh, with knowing the scope very well then the next one of course cost again if nobody has got a uh, open uh, wallet uh, and then say okay just take as much it wants to just go and de develop something in some of the startup companies if you can see they're all uh, work in a very very uh, stringent budget because they don't have that much of money they otherwise they got to go to another um, venture capitalist and then ask uh, to ask them to cough up more money okay and they, we are not everybody is like a, 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 a in the fortune 500 or 100 companies where they have money because they always have some money dedicated to to exploit what the company is doing right now to increase customer satisfaction do operational excellence etc and they have to allocate some fund for r&d to explore what new opportunity that's lying outside so it's always a between exploit and explore the conflict but not everybody is at that luxury to do that so you got to be very sensitive about you know being running things efficiency minimizing wastage so you need to have the right resource first of all you need to have the capacity fully utilized whether it is the resources resources does not mean it is just human resources it is also the infrastructure resources the resilient hardware that you need to run this right and of course as a critical success factor you need to also have a very good engagement cross functional teams you need everybody you need the, see that's what i saw call in in their in their uh, you know uh, educational stuff they always say it's always in, in governance and enterprise it it's not it at the end of the day it's it's a business and it together forming a core team this that kind of a tight uh, well knit uh, a team you need it's always i always say in my engagements we need great business partners with information technology i worked in both places all right and of course communication is super important 
if something is not working, something is working, keep everybody, uh, you know, ab abridged with what's happening. Okay, let's go to the next slide, please. Okay, let's get, let to, get, to, get to the, the meat, project management tool sets. First and foremost is project charter. Without going into much details, I'll just uh, give you project charter, the Gantt chart, which you can see on the bottom of the screen, then the work breakdown structure, which is where basically you take the bigger chunks of deliverable into what does it take to get to that deliverable. And uh, so that way you can assign the task to individual. And then project status is super important. Risk and issue log. You need to see what is the issue? What is the severity of the issue? What is the risk? Is it, an, is it a known risk? Is it something which you can mitigate or you can transfer the risks to someone? Or, or sometimes people are always fearful about uh, the risk of the risk of not knowing what that it is a risk and of course you need to have a racy chart which is a, you know as you see here who is responsible who is accountable who is consulted and who is informed okay so that is super important and of course minutes of the meeting means just to just a document with action items every meeting is super important get somebody uh, in, in consulting that i've seen but there's always a person who is uh, taking care of oh, okay what is the end of the at the end of the meeting what are the action item who is supposed to do what we need to go with a clear agenda. You need to come out with a key walk takeaways from this. And of course, we need to do ROI analysis. Now, I just wanted to focus your attention to the right side where you can see the project charter. See, if nobody is got that, when you're, when you're putting a project, you say, do you have a charter? What is a charter? It just tells you what problem are we solving? Who are the stakeholders? When are we expected to deliver? What are my key assumptions? All right, which is you can see who is going to accept it. You can see, right? What is the exit criteria? Means we need to know when you think the project is success, right? And then who is the sponsor? Because that way, we, if we wanted to go for ask for more money because uh, the project there is a cost to overrun because some uh, unprecedented things happened where you are to spend more money. If we need to abridge them. So in that case, you know, you need to have, this is my charter, just a one page document. Everybody should have, I would self write it and say, this is the problem I'm solving. This is the customer. This is my assumptions. That itself is a separate topic. The, you need to validate your assumptions because you assume getting into a project of doing something. You assume that it's going to take this much. You assume that somebody is going to uh, help you uh, dependent like a vendor, customer or other teams. Sometimes, you know, due to their uh, priority list, a project, we, we, it's always not dedicated. Not all the f f folks are reporting to the project manager. It's a matrix organization in some cases. So they work in finance, they work in sales, they work in uh, other department, but to help come and help you. So what happens due to the priority shifting, they will not be able to help you when uh, when when they have other priorities that coming in their way so you have to go and reset things like that so you 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 they were allocating 30 percent of that time to support your project but that became five percent so you got to really make sure what are the assumptions that you are ma making how many resources you need you know and uh, how long you're going to take everything needs to be documented and monitored very well okay Again, I'm just giving a high level. We can talk. Everything is, is, a, is a topic on its own to see how to really um, uh, excel in such areas. But at least this will give you an idea again, right? Uh, let's go to an example. This is something I like. Let's go to the next slide, please, which is example project marketing campaign management. Sounds very simple, huh? I'm going to spend five minutes on this. Okay, where do you where do you start reading? Okay, let's just I just put it the color coding there on the left. You can see where uh, the various uh, uh, the faces are given there in this case, right? So you well, okay, let's understand the problem. What are we doing? I'm telling the customer expect a new product that we are going to launch, and I'm sending an email to the customer about uh, getting them excited about that. Or I'm telling them like um, we have already launched the product. Here is how you can place an order. Okay. Or you are saying we are doing a marketing event, and uh, if you wanted to just to come and uh, experience the product, you can come and do it. For example, right? So it's just such a simple thing, but you know you'll be really amazed in this example. You see, you need to understand who's the target audience because there's like about uh, millions of people. 
hundreds and thousands of people. Who's your target audience? Is your focus group? I mean, they will give you. You as a project manager should just know this uh, because to help steer the project and uh, what tools are we going to use to get this data? And then uh, how are, who are you going to collaborate? What's the time? When are you going to execute it? What is the messaging requirement? Because these are all will give you who are the dependent players to make this project successful. How are you going to monitor that we are, we are successful? And then, of course, you will engage uh, the, the uh, folks who will be designing their email and then uh, to review and uh, prep all of this. Then there is always a tool you use to get this uh, uh, campaign executed. And sometimes it could be a, you know, a Salesforce tool. It could be a homegrown tool. It could be any third party tools for what or what not. Right. A campaign management tool. And then you have to got it tested and vetted out. Here is the fun part. That's it. My campaign is done and executed. No. Look at the email that goes to the customer. Then what do you expect the call to action from a customer standpoint? The customer what? They open. So you need to see if the customer opened or not. So that's a tracking. The customer clicked or not. That's tracking again. What do you want the customer to do? That's a call to action. Do you want them to go to our website and buy something or sign up for something? Now here is the fun part. Is your website resilient enough to handle such volume of calls that comes to you? You know what I mean? So that is very important to let the web team involved and then say, we are going to do this campaign and we are going to put the link for people to sign up in a form. Is the form ready? Is the graphics ready? Is the content ready? Is it legally vetted? All kinds of things need to be done, right? See, that's a, that's a huge dependency. Second thing is and then if the, if the people have, a, you need to test it, the scalability of the website too, right? At the same time, you need to inform when the campaign is going to be launched, how many people we are sending it. So you look at some past experience to see uh, what is the, what is the percentage of clicks and things like that that will be you'll be able to gauge from the metrics to to plan this and the next part is right you need to make sure that the data analytics team is putting the right tracking code on the website to see uh, to track all of this correct so it's such a simple thing now move to the the you can see the right here software engineering if it's an example it's a website there's a content management, there's a campaign software, there is a the, the data source, you need to engage the database team, infrastructure team, then the analytics team, the intelligence team, such a simple thing and then say, send an email to potentials and customers to just get them excited on a new product. And then what? You just have start tracking and then you see uh, how this uh, cross sell, upsell and other opportunities worked and how, uh, what is the effect of this campaign? Isn't it fun? There's so much, and of course, there is always approval. You are, you, you have companies branding is important, companies image is important, and also what worked here is it local or global, Asia Pacific or Europe or uh, what not? Where where are we doing this? So that is super important to know as a project manager. The reason is, um, as a project manager, just pay attention to understand the context. That's all I'm saying. So that means. It will, it, now you, you start thinking, oh, then you will be effective. If you know what is being delivered, who are all involved, what are the nuances? That means it's a great learning. And you know what? Every project you will have fun. It's tough. I mean, it's, I'm not, it's not easy. Every project you will have fun. You feel like, uh, you know, otherwise you feel like, I'm just uh, running a status report to see whether you met. Hey, can you give me the status, please? And then can you see what is next? That's no fun. This is fun. You learn in the project. So my way of doing things, which I tell my team, and when I build the teams, I build PMOs. One of the things I, I, I learned from the great leaders, that's what they, they, they do. Understand the context. I keep repeating that word that you might have seen like a broken record, right? Okay, let's go to the next one, please. Yeah, so now the fun part, right? Tips for leading projects effectively. Again, it's more like a treat this like a summary and the entire thing that uh, what I'm, I was uh, uh, I'm mentioning to you from my learnings, it's there in this slide. Have a project charter. For, understand the business case, the re requirements, assumptions, the timeline. And please, who does what? That's very good thing. We, we In the early stage, you need to establish that. That's part of initiating, right, phase. Then, I mean, in the planning phase, there are lots of things, but I'm just giving some key things for you. 
plan and collaborate well. This is very important. The developer, when you go and ask for a status, should know this guy is asking for a good reason. Right? It's not like, you know, tell me when you're done. Its question is, are you blocked? Can I get you some help? Because a lot of, uh, you know, individually, there are, there are different styles of functioning. People have tend to focus on, you give me something, I'll be done. Like a horse with the blind. They don't know anything about outside. So as a project manager, you are at just a step above to look at everything that's happening at a, at a, at a 20,000 foot level and then see, oh, this is not happening. The handshake is broken. This is not very clearly documented and such things. Okay. And then, of course, understand the infosec requirements, uh, evaluate the compliance, meeting cadence, agree on how frequently are you going to have a steering committee meeting, a status meeting, not too many meetings, but at least a, a, it's like, a, um, what is the off-site of, uh, what is the out-of-site, out-of-mind. So you need to have, this is the project status, it's available here, go and check it, or you send it like a, the, the push, this, this is the project status and this is the milestones met, this is the milestones upcoming, uh, these are all the various dates we are targeting, this is the blocker, and in this blocker, this is the help that we need, and this is the progress we made, all in a couple of uh, couple of bullets, you can, you can just simply share in an email or a, or a slide deck or use a tool. See, that's where the tool comes in effectively. There are lots of tools that, that is uh, there where you can just attract the tasks, the dependencies, the timeline, who does what, etc. It's leverage the tool. It could be a simple Excel spreadsheet or it could be a sophisticated tool on the cloud or it could be, uh, you know, the typical uh, Gantt chart that is given by uh, Microsoft Project kind of a tool or it, there are lots of uh, tools available, of course, uh, Zoho also, right? They've got uh, the, the tools. So there are a lot of things that are, that are available uh, uh, in, in, the, in the market. Trello, of course, so you, you have. And I've used very many application tools. Like even Jira has got that. There are a lot of you need to compare based on your company's uh, objectives and uh, what is the functionality and feature set and, and the stuff. Uh, and then use. And some people even use Confluence for that. So the, no matter which tool you use, the thing is you are there to bring visibility. Please do that. And then the key thing in executing, I'll keep it at a very high level from a time constraint perspective. Please test everything. Dry run, data migration, dry run. If you have some assumptions, validate the assumptions. Go talk to the field. Hey, this is what we are planning to build. If we give this to you, would you be willing to be part of a subject matter expert? You've got lots of knowledge in this area. Why don't you just come and uh, help, right? So they'll be very happy to help. People are waiting to ask because if you are going to solve their problem, definitely they will be very glad to help you, right? And then control and monitoring. This is where, uh, again, this is a, is a topic on its own. Planning the rollout considerations. That is where you got to be very careful with rollout and uh, phase to rollout, pilot rollout, and whatnot. All right. So, again, get everybody informed. If uh, you're going to, uh, like, like I said in the example, if you're going to launch uh, a, 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 an email campaign to people and the customer is going to uh, click on it to do, and most often what happens, not everybody will understand it in first place. Uh, I mean, I, I cannot generalize it. Some of them, what they do, they choose to call. So do you have the support team uh, enabled, uh, the customer support to handle the calls? If they do not know that such campaign has gone, in, this, in the example that I shared, See, that is what is called rollout and the dependency, understand and collaborate. All righty, good. So, so, if you, if you, so in, a, in a nutshell, if you take care of some of these key things and look for failures, so that as you have seen, right, in the, in, the, in the model that I've learned from Amazon and all, like, you know, you have an idea, form a team, just go and uh, execute, fail fast, learn, and then put your learnings to improve refine and uh, successful take risks and then you come out successful but pay attention to understand the context and project manager has to understand the purpose of them being there all right so let's go and do the right thing so that uh, kind of what i wanted to share today and uh, definitely i'm here to um, answer a few questions so Gaurango could you mind uh, sharing any questions we have from the team please
Okay. Yeah, so um, I think, uh, yeah, so I got a few questions here. So um, hope you can still hear me, right? So um, how to automate the project management workflow? We can, uh, uh, they wanted to share some tips. So again, the question here is, uh, first of all, um, automation is very good because it, it expedites things and uh, you have better tracking visibility. So please evaluate any software that's available and which can help uh, get the bring the visibility on a task based approach a task with the owner with uh, clear deliverables with the dependencies with uh, also estimation and also can get a roll up summary and gives the visibility of the multiple uh, projects that you are tracking to the portfolio so i would say uh, the first thing to automate is we need to be disciplined to have some of the process understood thoroughly and uh, with a standard best practice within the team who are project managers that is very important and also we need support from the c-level executives to support for project i mean there are i've seen in companies where they say just get it done i don't know how you do it that's one approach other thing is you know what we have to follow a process so that we learn from our mistakes and correct ourselves so follow a process tell me what do you need to get that automated? So definitely you can leverage any of the, uh, the software tools that are uh, available to do that. Um, the main reasons for uh, projects fail is because, again, not understanding the context uh, uh, very well. And also the factor is you always plan for happy path. I would always uh, be a little bit uh, um, nervous and I say if everything works well, yeah that's not the ideal world right the ideal world is we expect to that to be so look for failures always ask the question where can it fail if it fails what do i do always think like that be the devil's advocate and then see if it fails always have plan b people say no we work with one plan that's the plan we execute it thank you you're good but always keep something in a back pocket and see if it fails what do you do if the resilient hardware it could be have multiple failover with one fail, you have the second one. The second, the other, the factor is a, a thorough testing to make sure that, uh, uh, you know, testing is uh, done and uh, you, you learn from that results. And also I would say one key thing between QA scenarios, QA scenarios and uh, always take business scenarios too, and then test it and pilot it, learn, go to the field. Next question is, Successful project manager quality is understand the sense of purpose. You are collaborative. Like I said in the slide, you, you just look at the, the, the attitude. Keep an open attitude. Mine has to be like a parachute. It works only when it's open. Okay. And then um, you, you, have a, you are in a very, uh, you are the core center which connects a lot of people. Great facilitator, communicator, organizer. You can say all of that. Um, yeah. I, I will send some uh, recommendations for the book, but I would say at least once, you know, Pimbok is a very good uh, book to learn the various knowledge areas and processes that PMI recommends. And definitely we all learned from this, uh, uh, from Pimbok, right? And of course, uh, uh, you can always look at some agile books and stuff. I'll send my recommendations to the team later so they can share it uh, in an email. Um, Metrics should be used to convince executives to sanction, which is a very interesting question. I like that. Very interesting question. What metric, how do we convince executives to sanction a budget or a project? You know, this one is very important because this is, again, you partner with the marketing team, the sales team, or uh, your, uh, you know, supply chain team, and then uh, you work with them. They all have a business case and say, this increases my productivity, reduces my cost. And then uh, it reduces the clicks for the customer. It uh, gets us competitive because, you know, the same customer, which has been a customer for you for so long, will go to another company if they know that other company can, they can get the product for the same uh, money or less money, which is highly productive with the greater benefits. So one of the things we all learn in customer value creation is you need to make it easier for the customer to interact with you. And that's all about digital transformation. We, we can cover a separate topic on that. So I, I'm very much interested. So, so the point here is 
to convince the sponsor of course you can always say this is the problem we are addressing by addressing this problem and uh, this is the benefits across the various five things which i mentioned as an example legal regulatory compliance information security uh, efficiency productivity cost and then put a matrix and then say this is the true savings for doing this and uh, in, uh, employee morale safety uh, and making it a better likable lovable uh, in an environment um, yeah well again see uh, this is the question um, yeah uh, how do you compare the pmi model see the question is a company a, see agility is very important for for ability to uh, understand what's happening and your ability to to uh, to make some refinements change tweak and react to the market fluctuations and what's happening so but that does not uh, mean you should not have a process you should have a framework and agile agile is is you understood what's happening you know your capacity you have an ability to switch gears and react to, to do this with a high quality product okay and uh, again the, the 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 way they implement like you know it's a waterfall methodology you have agile methodology you have a hybrid methodology every company does different things uh, which suits their process culture and their structure and, and their strategy. So we got to do what works for every individual company based on uh, some analysis. So I would say uh, mm, nothing, um, um, or I would put it in a positive sense. If you're self-organized, that's the best thing you need to do uh, will help. Um, So again, um, the teach. I mean, I, I would say I'm sharing my learnings. There's one question is about uh, the teaching shared by you. I, I'm just sharing my knowledge of uh, the learnings here. So it's like everybody will have their own learning. Just pay attention to how your last couple of projects went. What did you learn? Why it didn't go well? Or if there are something that went well, just follow that. All right and uh, project there's another very good question about maintain project stability with the time constraints and maintain quality yeah that's that's a challenge on its own because quality is what even if you take more time quality do not compromise because the customer that's what they expect if you give five features that features better be better work okay so it, there's no point in giving 50 features where I'm using only 20% of the time. If I give you five features, which I use 80% of the time, and I do that well, that's what the customer wants. So if suppose say you, you planned for uh, some say mid June, and uh, you have some indications, look for early indicators where the project is not tracking well. So you look for something, and then you see that this is not going well. So what do you do? Find out what, what, what is the risk and how you can mitigate the risk, uh, whether cut down the scope, or uh, increase the resources that, that can help you to still meet the target or worst scenario is just uh, bring everybody to a discussion and say this is the situation it looks like we need to spend some more time to get this project uh, delivered so what do you think in terms of uh, our options can we just uh, take a couple of days more or uh, to just uh, do this right thing and in fact most business executives they understand the situation Nobody is wanted to put some product uh, in the market and then say, uh, yeah, just go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, um, yeah, this is a very interesting question from somebody. How do you, uh, uh, some of the best practices to use to organize multiple projects and stay up to date? Yeah, the, the question here is just to assign a person can have, for example, three to four projects. If a person has got 10 projects, it's going to be difficult. Just form a team. I'm not saying you need to have 40 project managers, but again, in this economy and stuff, you know, you need to make sure you get your homework done and get these data, spend some time, do some good planning. By proper planning, good support from the executive management, good understanding with the project team and collaboration, you'll be able to manage this. Portfolio management is an art. It's not an easy thing. You need support from everybody. And that's one of the big challenge. We all learn from every project. 
and one project is not the same like the other they always some variable that is being caused here okay um again the pmi there's one question about zoho um, uh, um again i uh, as you have seen i'm i have not attested any product here i'm just sharing what are the things that are out there um so my question here is use the pmi model to get to know what you need to focus on like you know procurement management your resource management risk management the quality the integration management right cost time cost schedule um right so all of these uh, you just to go through the knowledge areas uh, uh, that is uh, recommended like about 10 of them there and then understand the processes to get uh, uh, what is the structure that looks like and what we need to do and the applicability of each of them in your current projects and uh, so please um, do your homework there that's what i would uh, uh, i would suggest and this is uh, another question it's an interesting question too how do you plan taking into account uncertainty see uncertainty is always there right nothing is uh, certain especially situations like this a lot of projects are stalled now in this covid situation isn't it so what do you do you need to evaluate when you are going to resume this project is it still valid first of all in the current situation right and uh, that's one scenario the other thing is you are doing a project and uh, suddenly the business objective change the business is going in a different direction see ultimately all the projects that you do is to satisfy the business need to the executive they know exactly where the company is moving in which direction they are moving due to the market demand the feedback that the market survey the feedback that got from the market the companies tend to decide you know what maybe we need to refocus our attention readjust the scope like that there are always things like that happen so stay closer that's why the communication is important the status report is important the one thing which uh, i all, all often seen people saying i don't know what what's happening in the project do you guys know i don't want to be in that situation i always say it's i over communicate this is the project this is what it is and these are the challenges this is we are, we are on target we are not on target but unless you take care of these things always have a proactive communication all right i mean you can provide a remedial solution just in this call right now right every scenario is different you got to understand that as well but it's a good question risk analysis perform a six months project yeah i mean you, there's no time bound i would say if as a project manager you need to have the risk matrix list all the risks their severity and evaluate it uh, every couple of weeks to see is that risk still there or is it transferred is it mitigated or something which we cannot you know sometimes always we we always present the risk to the executives and say this is what is the risk we identified here is the mitigation plan we do and here is what sometimes you know the business executives they say i take this risk i assume the risk because they also evaluate they are responsible for the board at the end of the day right so the board the board is looking for a huge project multi million dollar projects right they have to respond to the board and what's happening to the to the project the migration project or is a new product that you are launching what is the risk of uh, not meeting the milestone or what is the risk that if the customer behavior change what with the regulatory things change so they always have to report so you you should know even if a slightest doubt just ask all right yeah this is a very good question how to check information security aspects in planning phase itself as many things come as during execution of project so information security is very important at every stage of the project i would say so understand what is the information security goals work with your uh, security team and uh, within the organization and understand what is their goal what is their policy and procedure get them engaged early enough into the project and give them a glimpse of what you are doing then they will put their minds to see you know uh, how is a, what website you are we are launching new what kind of testing needs to be done what data is being collected and uh, what are we doing with the data what is the archival strategy and what not and we have to cover it in a separate topic on this okay uh, but definitely engage them early okay um but it's very good question 
how much of contribution culture of the division of the company yeah so you're right culture it matters see again if you are so geographically distributed you need to have a you know a, a important uh, aspect about what works communication wise what works security wise what works their uh, uh, process wise and also vendors customers vendors are integral partners for you if the vendor does not follow a process and thorough documentation and stuff like that if you are dependent on the vendor the project will fail so you got to make sure the culture is not just within the organization within the it within the business it's also with your external party like customer and other folks so you got to be careful that's called engagement model that's called who does what go back to the basics so all we are covering in this is go back to the basics never ignore it just okay this is the timeline i'm i'm just going to hit it there's no magic so everybody has to have a clear expectations you know what the vendor has got their own release planning do you know that you you will base every assumption of this based on okay vendor is going to give this in time what if the vendor does not uh, deliver on time so that's where contract management comes in you write it in a contract that you are supposed to uh, you are obligated to do this if you don't do this it's heavy uh, you are penalized for this so people write contracts to talk to vendors so that itself is a, the procurement management uh, team so engage the right team to talk to them on on that behalf right um do you have some more minutes and uh, because i have a few more questions here i can handle a couple of minutes more i uh, just wanted to uh, share uh, um, again my knowledge and experience yes, what yes. best practice need to follow if project budget exceeds to completion budget yeah so uh, that's a that's a very interesting question see again i wish i have a magic wand to answer that question best practice is uh, if project budget needs to completion uh, i mean completion of the project see the again this is one area where people are people need a good support from a tool to track the cost allocation of the project to get ahead so this is one thing again start with any tool that you you got or do some analysis for a better tool to help the budget allocation and see how much capacity uh, it is going to take uh, what what does it take to do this project because it's procurement of hardware software licensing and things like that the development cost then the operational cost people often forget right and the support they also forget then the supply chain cost they forget so it depends on project to project so first of all get some kind of a ballpark estimate and this is one area where people are still improving i don't think they've got them they have mastered that there's always cost overrun but i would say here is the best thing to do just get some ballpark estimate and validate your assumption learn from it so that next time when you estimate estimation technique again you can you can be better at that and it's always fun uh, to at least when nobody asks for it you better do that that way it's it you good for your own edification all right um let me just go through some of the questions i see if i have not missed anything thanks for asking these questions uh, dear listeners i hope um, my answers are okay enough to i mean i have answered your question uh, i'm still trying um okay so i uh, ultimately process uh, matters and also one thing you, you you have to see is like um have a clear understanding with uh, the stakeholder on always check with them is that meeting your needs do you want uh, any different way of doing things uh, also work with the matrix organization if somebody is reporting into you from another department that's another challenge my manager gave me a new job i can't focus on this project anymore you will find this such such surprises so you got to be these are all your dependencies again as a project manager it is your responsibility to make sure your assumptions are validated and your dependencies are always uh, you know you can depend on them it's kind of funny to say right you depend on your dependencies and make sure you bring some predictability yeah so um, 
yeah the the okay i think i think fairly we covered fairly we covered and thanks for asking some questions uh, uh last one are there any best practices you can provide to help get yeah deliverables needed from a client i am i'm just thinking see that's again it's an understanding right who needs to do what start with that and then say for what you need for a project there's always a relay race right it's a handoff from one point to the other point so you got to work with them and see set expectations i expect you to deliver this for example if a vendor you're doing a let me go to some technically here uh, if you are de depending on a vendor where you give some request and the vendor is giving a response in an api signature for a technical project so in that case the vendor needs to be recipient be available to receive your request and provide a response and the question here is what if you are not able to connect to the vendor what if the vendor is not connect to you how do you get your acknowledgement working i'm look at an example like a middleware technical aspects of this project so that needs to be thoroughly tested but that needs to be thoroughly vetted out all the request uh, they should be in a position to uh, receive and they need to they their software tools and stuff needs to be uh, prepared for that so that's all the expectations which is again work with your engineering team and again one thing i wanted to say this whatever we heard oh it sounds like we have to do everything not necessarily just be aware be open understand what's happening then you will be able to help people at the end of the day you are your goal as project manager or our goal as project manager uh, or pmo program manager what not is your facilitators you are remover of impediments you are there to just make life easier for them and then it's like a question of it's not doesn't matter who who gets the credit we are a team have a team approach so for the success of the project together we succeed okay all right um let's see yeah the blind spots uh, project managers need to be careful about yeah actually that's very true blind spots is just talking to have a one on one and uh, in outside of just asking for status with your project team just ask them hey how is it going you know is there anything i can do for you is there anything what, what would make it easier for you to do what you're doing and uh, uh, is there any way i can help ask like uh, that open conversation will really help and again assumptions one thing if i can say don't assume even if, if you assume something because we all make assumptions validate your assumptions yeah this is a very good question for startups one person will be handling multiple project any suggestion uh, which thing we need to focus on in project phases well see multiple projects again you know that's a that's a little bit like juggling too many balls in the air right so you got to make sure go by the priority go by the deadline and things like that every project there's no big or small we need to succeed in those projects so i would suggest is dedicate your time to each project and focus on that project and just to see that don't just do okay this project i take care of this and then i go to the next project just have some focused time have some core team discussions with the project and say guys we have a deliverable thank you for partnering with us what what are the challenges blockers that we need to focus on how do i unblock you it's like your agile uh, you know daily stand up stuff right are you blocked hey who can help here right do we need help from the executives do we need help from within or there is always somebody who has done this before right and i would even say i tell my team all the time project managers can help other project manager too and then uh, get some help and say there's always somebody has done that and one thing i would say use a tool or tools standardize so that all the project managers use that and also set expectations with uh, on how the reporting needs to work between the project team so that everybody uh, uh, follows that so i'll say tools will be a, one of the very good aspects of uh, bringing some standardization at end of the day all right okay thank you guys uh, i guess uh, i've uh, tried to answer most of the questions uh, to my knowledge all right again i wanted to throw a disclaimer there once again 
these are from my experience and doesn't bind any of my employers current or past and uh, just uh, sharing what I learned from leaders and from other books and I'll, I'll share the other books and the stuff through to uh, Zoho team. Karungo and uh, Pratik, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. Thank you, Mr. Your talk was very Thank you, dear participants. Uh, for more updates about our future webinars, please do follow us on Twitter at Zoho Project and also subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stay safe.